here we have section 4.3. Polynomial division, the remainder theorem, and factor theorem. Remember, what we're trying to do, we're getting closer and closer and closer to being able to solve any polynomial that I give you. So this is the way this is we're getting this section and the next section are going to be the most critical for the entire class, the entire semester. These are the most important ones, because after these two sections, we'll be able to I'll, I'll be able to give you any type of equation, any type, and you'll be able to graph it. Without a calculator. So to do this, we have to figure out, OK, well, what world do we need to graph an equation? What do we need? We need to know the x-intercepts. The y-intercept. The shape. The direction of the function of the graph and we need some points out of these five there's only one of them that we have trouble with The shape and the direction, what tells us the shape and direction of a function? The leading term. Well, actually, both the leading term tells us the shape and direction. Which is A, X, N. N is the degree, and A is the leading coefficient. And last time, we had the leading leading table test, or leading coefficient test, said this. Here's my A's, and there's my N's. If A is positive, or if A is negative. If the degree is odd as opposed to even, if it's odd, that means the ends the ends of the graph point different directions. If it's positive, they point like this. If A is negative, then it points the other direction. It's always going down. If n is even, if the degree is even and a is positive, then both ends point up. If a is negative, then both ends point down. So that tells us a lot about the shape of the graph already. Last time we also talked about multiplicity. What was multiplicity? The multiplicity is well, it tells us if the graph. crosses the x-axis or bounces off the x-axis.
the multiplicity is after we factor the polynomial into its smallest factors. So here we have a polynomial. it's x minus c1, x minus c2, all the way down to x minus cn. Notice this n is the same as the degree. So we'll have at most the same number of factors as the degree of the equation. So if the degree of the equation is a three, we should have three answers. The multiplicity are these exponents right here. That's the multiplicities. It tells us the number of times the answer repeats itself. So if the multiplicity is odd, then the graph crosses the x-axis at that answer, at that intercept. And if it's even, it just bounces off the x-axis of that answer. And we'll do some examples of these. We'll we're going to find these answers and then we'll also graph them while we're doing it. So again, by looking at the equation, by looking at all this stuff, the shape, the direction is coming by leading term. Where does the y-intercept come from? It's the constant term. We well, can't say last term because what if we have no constant if it's just an x? But it's it's the constant term. If all the x's disappear, whatever's left is your is your y-intercept. And then points, we can just plug in some points all we want. The more points we have, the better picture we'll get. So the problem is this: finding the x-intercepts, the solutions of the equation. And there are two methods of doing this. Okay, let's let's see what this is all about now. Let's use an easy example here. If that's our polynomial, we know that it's made up of two factors. What are they? The second has a plus, so they're the same. They're both pluses. What times what is six? When you add them, you get five. So we know that's the factor of it. So we know that this polynomial is made up of these two equations. But what if I only gave you one? Or if I give you none of them, how would we find it? That's what we're doing in this section today. So we have two methods to find the factors of the polynomial P of X.
lung division. Or something called synthetic division. Lung division always works, but it's time consuming. The bigger the equation, the longer your answer, your process is going to be. Synthetic division only works if the denominator bottom number is of the form x plus or minus some number. It has to be a linear equation. x cannot have an exponent or a number in front of it or behind it or below it. It just has to be x plus or minus a number. So if it's not that, it doesn't work. You have to use long division. So that sucks. Long division is stuff we've been doing all along. For example, if we had 18 divided by 2, long division would look like this. How many times does 2 go into 18? 9. 9 times 2 is 18. Change the signs and add. So, this is your remainder. The remainder is what's going to be important to us. If the remainder is zero, then we know that this is called a divisor. This is called a dividend. And the answer is called a quotient. So if our remainder is zero, then what this tells us is that we know that 18 is made up of two times nine. We can, we can multiply this together, we get 18 with no remainder. That's what we're trying to get to in this topic of long division. So let's look at this. Let's do long division with this. We're gonna I'm gonna give you this equation. So x plus three and x squared plus five x plus six. Basically, what I'm giving you is this. I'm giving you this equation. This is how you'll set it up. Like we did the example here. 18 divided by 2. So I said the denominator goes out here and the numerator goes inside there. The process here is always look at the leading terms. What times x gives me x squared? x. So then we, we multiply. x times x gives me x squared. x, or positive times positive is positive. x times 3 is 3x. Three then we change the signs. And add. The first term has to cancel. If it doesn't, you did something wrong. So 5 minus 3 is 2x and bring down everything else. Repeat the process. What times x gives me 2x, a positive 2x? 
a positive two. Signs are important. So we take positive two times x gives me positive two x. Positive times positive is positive. Two times three is six. Change the signs and add. And there's your, your remainder is zero. And this is your answer. So we know that x plus 3 times x plus 2 is equal to this. And that's what it says here. So that's what this whole thing is about. That's what we're trying to find here. Pretty lengthy, isn't it? And we're gonna, you have to know how to do that because if you can't do synthetic, then you got to use long division. Let's look at synthetic division now. Synthetic division... only uses the coefficients and the solution of the denominator. Yeah, we have our equation here. Our first step Solve the denominator for x. As we have x plus 3 equals 0, x equals negative 3. Now, since our x is negative 3, that's going to go out here. You can tell it's synthetic division because of dividing things upside down. That's, how, that's what differentiates the long division from the synthetic division. Now, inside here, only the coefficients of our equation. So here's the coefficient of x squared of x and a constant. So the coefficient of x squared is 1. Of x is 5, and our constant is 6. And you notice I'm not worried about the space, because this is all the space you need for a synthetic division. You start off by bringing the first term down. Now this is a process of multiplication. This times this. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. And add straight down. So 5 minus 3 is 2. Repeat the process. Negative 3 times 2 equals negative 6. Add straight down. And there's your remainder. So that's your remainder 0. That means this is your answer. This is the constant. This is your x term. So we have 1x and a positive 2. That's the answer, which is the same thing we had over here. Well, whatever the first term is here, that's what starts off here. And then you go down. You on the, What I always do is write down, if this was x to the fifth, I'd have x to the fourth, third, second, third. And then I would look at the coefficients. Because if, if you're missing a term, you have to put a zero there. And the answer is always going to be one less than the highest exponent. It's going to start off with the one less than the highest exponent. Because you divide it by 1x. So x squared divided by x is just x. And that's what we start off with. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and look at our first example. Determine whether x plus 1 and x minus 3 are factors of this polynomial. For, for the first one, let's do it both ways, synthetic and long, because you need to have practice using long division. So we have x plus 1, x cubed, 2x squared, minus 5x, minus 6. You have to have all the x's from the largest exponent from the degree down to the constant. If it's missing something, put a 0 in that place. You have to hold each of those columns. Look at the first terms. What times x gives me x cubed? x squared, very good. So now we multiply. x squared times x is x cubed. Positive times positive is positive x squared times 1 is x squared. Change the signs and add. So those cancel. 2 minus 1 is 1, x squared. And bring down everything else. Negative 5x minus 6. What times x gives me x squared? Positive or negative? Positive, because it's a positive x squared. So I put a plus x in there. So positive times positive is positive. x times x is x squared. Positive times positive is positive. x times 1 is x. What do we do next? Change signs and add. The first term has to cancel. Negative 5x minus 1x is negative 6x. Bring down the last term. Look at the first terms. What times x gives me negative 6x? Negative 6, very good. So negative 6 times x is negative 6x. Negative times positive is negative. 6 times 1 is 6. Change the signs and add. So is x plus 1 a factor? Yes. x plus 1 is a factor of the polynomial. So what we know is this. And x plus 1 times that. And then what we would do, we would just factor this one. And then we'd have all the all the factors of this equation. So the next step what we do, we take this solution and factor that. It's quadratic. So here, we can see if factoring works. Second sign's a plus, so the signs are opposite. The biggest number gets a plus. What times what is 6? When you subtract them, you get 1. 3 and 2. And the first sign's plus, so the 3 goes with the plus. And those, that's your, those are your factors. 
So what are the x-intercepts? Well, it's negative one, negative three, and positive two. We have to have three of them. We have th it's a cubic equation. We have to have three answers. And then we'll come back in a second and graph this, and I'll show you where the multiplicity comes in. So let's do this one with synthetic division. with the x plus one. So we're gonna divide this polynomial by x plus one. So first step is take x plus one, set it equal to zero, and tell me what x equals. x equals negative one. So that goes out here. No, I forgot to say, remember, look, always set up your equations from the highest exponent down. And if you notice the answers, they go from largest to smallest. So again, that's, so that's an x cubed. We divide it by an x, so we have x squared, then x, then a constant. So what numbers go inside here? Very good. Yeah, so this is x cubed, x squared, x, and constant. Bring down the first term, and that begins the whole process. Negative 1 times 1 equals negative 1. Add straight down. 2 minus 1 is 1. Negative one times one equals negative one. Add straight down. Negative five minus one is negative six. Negative one times negative six is positive six. Add straight down and we have a zero. Since our remainder is zero, we know that x equals negative one is a solution. And this is your remainder equation. The constant, the x term, and the x squared. So we have one x squared. We have a positive, positive one x. And we have a negative six. That's the same thing we had up here. And to be honest with you, that's pretty much all there is to the division part. So let's check x minus 3 to see if that's a factor. Use whatever method you want. Who's going to use synthetic? Yeah, it, Especially with the space left, I definitely use synthetic. And it's much faster. Okay, so what's the first step? Set that equal to zero and solve for x. So that's outside the thingy. Again, we have the same numbers in there. One, two, negative five, negative six. bring down the one, the first term, and multiply and add. 
3 times 1 is 1, and add 3. It's new math. <laughs> Two plus three is five. It's Halloween. So three times five is 15. 15 minus five is 10. Three times 10 is 30. 30 minus six is 24. This is not zero, so that's not a factor. Not a factor. But here's another cool thing. If you don't like doing this, the beautiful thing about these is they tell us what we have left. If we have a zero remainder, we know what we have to look at next. We don't have to go back to the original equation. We just have to now factor that whatever's left. That's the beautiful thing about these things. So once we find a zero remainder, we just have to go and factor out what the answer is from that one. So it gets smaller each time. But let's look at this equation again. The polynomial is, this is example one, x cubed plus 2x squared minus 5x minus 6. And it's saying that x minus 1, or x plus 1, x minus 3. What if, when we solve for these, we know this one is x equals negative 1 and x equals 3. What would happen if we took these and plugged them inside our equation? Let's find out. Negative one cubed is negative one times negative one times negative one. It's negative one. Negative one squared, negative one times negative one is positive one. So it's just two times one. Negative times negative is positive. So negative one plus two. Two minus one is one. One plus five is six. Six minus six is zero. Do the same thing with the three. Three cubed, two, three squared, five times three minus six. What is three cubed? 27, very good. Plus two, three squared is nine, so it's two times nine. Minus 15, minus six. Two times nine is 18. Twenty seven plus 18 is 45, negative 15, negative 6 is negative 21, 45 minus 21 is 24. Those are the remainders. So if you want to do it this way, you can see if it's a factor or not. If, it, if you get a zero, then it's a factor. 
or we know that negative one is a solution. The, one of the x-intercepts is negative one. We know that three is not an x-intercept. So that's pretty cool. But you need to know what the rest of the equation is. If you have if you have a zero remainder, you have to know what the what the other equations are. Okay, let's look at example two. Use synthetic division to find the quotient and the remainder. So this equation looks like this. So this is our denominator. We have to set that equal to zero. Cubed x squared, x, and constant. So the numbers inside here are 2, 7, 0, negative 5. What's your conclusion? Okay, so, but it did say, find the quotient and the remainder. This is the remainder. What would be the quotient? How would you write that as a quotient? Remember, since your equation was x cubed, so this one has to be x squared. Then this is x squared. This has to be x, and that's your constant. We're not done yet. 2x cubed plus 7x squared minus 5 over x plus 3 is equal to 2x squared plus x minus 3 plus the remainder, which is 4 over x plus 3. This is your remainder. This is your quotient. So whenever you have a remainder, you have to put that over the denominator because it's, it's not a it's not a solid number. It's it's a part of a number.
Let's look at example three. Given this polynomial, find f of 10. what we have so far. 10 to the fifth is 100,000, and so it's all the way down. Multiply by two, come by three. So let's begin left to right. 200,000 minus 30,000 is what? So 200 minus 30 is what? 170,000, that's these two. What's that? Oh. Bam. Thank you. Then we add these two. 170,000 plus 1,000 is 171,000. One hundred seventy-one thousand minus two hundred. So it's one seven one zero 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 minus two hundred. It's a hundred and seventy thousand eight hundred. Plus 10. Minus 8. So 10 minus 8 is 2. You get that? Excellent. Okay, that's one way you've done it. How else could you have done it? We could done synthetic division. So we have two, this is x to the fifth, x to the fourth, x to the third, x second, x, and constant. So we have a two, a negative three, a one, a negative two, a one, a negative eight. Ten times two is twenty. Twenty minus three is seventeen. Ten times seventeen is one hundred and seventy. Plus one is one seventy one. Ten times one seventy one is one seven one zero. Just put a zero behind it now. Minus two is one seven zero eight. 10 times this, so just put a zero behind that one. And add one. We have one, seven, zero, eight, one, zero. Minus eight is one, seven, zero, eight, zero, two. Which way is easier? Synthetic division by far. I mean, anytime you multiply anything by 10, just put a zero behind it. How many of y'all thought about doing that? Nope. So, again, that's a, that's a shortcut with synthetic division. Any, any equation you have, if it's asking you to find f of whatever, just do synthetic division. It'll tell you what the answer is. This is the answer.
example four. Determine whether five is a zero of this polynomial. Okay, what it's asking is x equal five a zero? In other words, will f of five equal zero? So how are you going to do it? What method are you going to use? Synthetic, yeah. So the fourth, x cubed, x squared, x and constant. So one, zero, negative 26, zero, 25. So it is a factor. So since x equals five is a fact is a is a zero, what is our factor? If x equals five, then x minus five equals zero. This is one of the factors. And the other ones, since that's x to the fourth, this is x cubed, five x squared minus x minus five, that's the other one. Is there another way we could have found it besides long division? Yes, that's, that's another way. But by just plugging x for five and work that out. Using what we did last chapter, is this a quadratic-like function? Remember, a quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c. We know it's quadratic because the exponent of the middle term times 2 equals the first one. So 2 times 2 gives you 4. So this is quadratic, which means it may have a factor. And remember, when we did this, we put x and x here. You Whatever goes here is really the middle term. So this is x squared and x squared. Both signs are the same. They're both minus. What times what is 25? When you add them, you get 26. Twenty-five and one. Take both of these and set them equal to zero. So we'll move that over there. So we have x squared equals 25. x squared equals 1. What do we do to get rid of the square? Square root both sides. 
So x is equal to 5 and x is equal to 1. True or false? Partially true. Because whenever you take the square root of something squared, you have to put a plus or minus in front of it. These are our four answers. Negative 5, positive 5, negative 1, positive 1. Those are our x-intercepts. And that's the hardest part, because you always have to remember what did we do in the past as well. So now you have multiple ways of solving these things. Number five. Ooh, this is an interesting one. Determine if I is a zero of the function. What do we remember about I's? It's imaginary. Where does it come from? I equals the square root of negative one. So whenever you have an I squared, that's the same thing as negative one. So let's begin. Let's use synthetic division. Here's x cubed, x squared, x, and a constant. 1, negative 3, 1, negative 3. The rules still apply. I times one is I. Add, so we have negative three plus I. I times negative three plus I. Is negative three I plus I squared. And I squared is a negative one. So it's negative three I minus one. And add these, negative three I plus minus one plus one. So the ones cancel. So we have negative 3i. i times negative 3i is negative 3i squared. Since that's a negative 1, it just changes, so it becomes 3. I is a factor. Actually, I is a zero. X minus, well, remember, it's X equals I is your solution. So X minus I, that's your factor. I is, a, I is a solution, I is a zero, but X minus I is your factor. Now let's put everything together. This is a perfect lead in to the next section, which we'll cover next time. I'm just giving you a new polynomial. It says find all the factors.
In other words, what we have to do here is, in other words, our solutions, our zeros could be positive, negative one, positive or negative two, positive or negative three, and so on and so forth. Let's begin. Let's begin with positive one. So it's one, negative three, negative six, eight. Try to do it yourself. Don't look at the board. Have you finished three? Oh, sorry, no, sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. You don't see that. Yes. So one is a zero of the polynomial. So we know that x equals one. So x minus one is a zero. This is a factor. This is one of our factors. How many are we supposed to have? Three, because it's a cubic equation. So now all we have to do is look at this polynomial. We have x squared minus 2x minus 8. When you get to the quadratic equations, you can either use the quadratic formula or factor it again. Since the second signs, we have one's positive, one's negative. What times what is eight when you subtract and we get two? Yeah, and the bigger number gets negative. So my zeros are x equals negative 2, x equals 4, and x equals 1. My factors are x plus 2, x minus 4, x minus 1. Those are the factors of that polynomial. What do y'all think? Pretty easy? If you understand this, you're in good shape because that means we just have to introduce a couple more new things next time. And then we can solve. Because so far, we've been, pretty, we've been pretty lucky. All our coefficients A have always been 1. It changes whenever A is not equal to 1. It can be negative. It can be positive but it could be a larger than one, negative one. And we'll do that next time. Okay, okay, everybody, that's it for today.